bright duty every student matters hello students today we will study about the next chapter of biology that is reproduction right so before we start uh, start the chapter let us understand what is reproduction now reproduction is formation of new generation of young ones of the similar type from the grown up individuals for example if you sow a seed of sunflower plant a new plant will grow this is reproduction a unicellular amoeba for instance divides into two cells to form two new daughter cells this is also reproduction a cat giving birth to a kitten this is also reproduction so all living organisms whether unicellular or multicellular whether plants or animals they all undergo reproduction to produce more of their own kind now in the last chapter we studied about various life processes like nutrition respiration transportation and excretion those life processes as i told you were essential for the survival of a living organism without those processes a living organism cannot survive but reproduction is not important for survival an individual won't die without reproduction it is not important for survival it is not an important life process but then we all organisms do reproduce what is the significance of reproduction firstly continuation of life reproduction is very important for continuation of life on earth if all organisms cease to reproduce if they do not reproduce any more the whole life on the earth will vanish will disappear from the earth within a span of few years second survival of a species during reproduction what happens the hereditary material the information is passed on to the next generation for each species so each species is able to survive and continue because of reproduction if all the organisms present in a species if they do not reproduce that ultimately all the organisms will grow old and die so the species will uh, will disappear from the earth so it is important for the survival and continuation of the species thirdly variations now during reproduction the new generations which are produced although they are similar to the parents but they are not exact copies so there is certain variation in each generation these variations are very important as they lead to evolution and adaptation to the environment so although reproduction is not an important life process for the survival of a living being but it has its own significance for the continuation of life and continuation of species on the earth now during reproduction do organisms create exact copies of themselves this is the question which arises now i have simplified the diagram of the cell division for you as you know each cell in a living organism contains nucleus and nucleus has a thread like material which is called chromatin material these chromatin material contain the dna deoxyribonucleic acid the dna are the information center they have all the information for the building up and the activities carried out within a cell now what happens during when the cell is ready to divide for cell division these this chromatin material arranges itself into chromosomes these are thread like structures now i have just for the sake of uh, simplicity i have taken two chromosomes let us consider an organism a cell which has two chromosomes when a cell is ready to divide these dnas they replicate they form the copy of itself the exact copies so if there were two chromosomes in the beginning now there are four chromosomes the dna replicates itself and forms its own copies now what happens these copies they then separate out and the nucleus starts to divide that is the first step the dna replicates and the nucleus starts to divide so each part of the nucleus will have two chromosomes in this case as you can see four now again 2 plus 2 uh, uh, side by side the cytoplasm and the cellular structure also starts dividing this leads to two daughter cells the two this is the new generation of daughter cell 
one parent cell gave rise to two daughter cells. Now, since they contain the same chromosomes which are present in the parent cell, so ideally these daughter cells should be the exact copies of their parents. But it is not so. Why? What happens during this replication? When the DNA is replicating and forming its own replica, thousands of biochemical processes occur. So, there are chances that during these processes, some of the processes might go wrong. So, the new replica which is formed, the new generation which is formed, they are not the exact copies. They are not identical to the parent cell. There are some little structural and functional differences, which we call as variations. So, the question, do organisms create exact copies? No, they do not create exact copies of themselves because during replication of DNA, there are slight variations, slight changes because of some fault in during these biochemical processes. Right. This is a simple cell division process uh, which is called mitosis in which first the DNA replicates and then divides into two parts so that the number of chromosomes remains the same in the parent cells and the daughter cells. That is the importance of DNA replication. If the DNA will not replicate, how will they form two cells? It is not possible. So, for the transfer of genetic material from the parent to the daughter cell, it is important that the DNA first replicates and then divides into two similar parts. Now, uh, this mitosis process plays very important role in reproduction of asex uh, unicellular organisms, which we will study in the next part that is asexual reproduction. For example, in amoeba, if it has to divide, the DNA first replicates and divides into two cells. Mitosis also plays important role in wound healing and in growth when the new cells are to be formed, mitosis occurs. Now, as I told you, during replication, there are some changes that are called mutations or variations. So, what is the importance of these variations? Are they important or not? Let us understand. Firstly, the these variations help in adaptations. The, on the earth, there can be some drastic changes in the environment, sudden rise in temperature or fall in temperature, a lot of water or maybe lack of water. So, a new individual has to adapt to these changes, otherwise they will die. So, variations help in adapting. They help the individuals to adapt to the environment which, in which they are present. Right. For example, we use a lot of insecticides. The farmers use it in the field. Even we use at uh, our homes. But still, there are so many insects still present. How come? Now, if in a certain area you spray an insecticide, most of the individuals will die. But some insects which are resistant to the insecticides, they'll remain. They'll, they'll be alive. Afterwards, they'll multiply, they'll grow and, be, and they'll be they'll adapt to these changes in the environment. So, because of these variations, new individuals are, can adapt to the changes in the environment. Secondly, variations help in individuality. That is, uh, I am different from you. We are different from each other. They are, although we are similar, but we are not identical. So, we are able to recognize each other because of variations. That is another importance of variation. Thirdly, variation play a very important role in evolution. New species are formed, we change over the years. So, that, that is possible only because of variation. So, I will just summarize what we learned till now. First is reproduction, that is formation of new individuals of the similar type from the grown up individuals. Why it is important? For continuation of life and for continuation of a species on earth. During cell division, during this reproduction, the first step is replication of DNA. Why is this replication of DNA important? To transfer the hereditary material from one generation to another, so that the number of chromosomes present in the parent cell and the next generation daughter cell remains the same. Then we studied about the importance of variation. It helps the individuals to adapt to the environment, then it helps in evolution, 
it also gives all of us the individuality. We are able to recognize each other. We are different from each other because of variations. Let's, let's move on to the next section that is asexual reproduction. So, students, now we will study about types of reproduction. Basically, there are two types of reproduction, asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. In asexual reproduction, the new generation of young ones are formed by involvement of only one parent. They are formed without any formation or fusion of gametes. One parent gives rise to young ones of the new generation. While in sexual reproduction, two parents are involved, one male and one female. The reproduction occurs by fusion of gametes, one male gamete and one female gamete fused together to form a new cell which grows up into a new individual. Let us understand the difference between asexual and sexual reproduction in detail. First is parents. So, asexual reproduction is mostly uniparental, that is only one parent is involved. While sexual reproduction is biparental, that is two parents are involved, one male and one female. In asexual reproduction, gametes are not formed. There is no formation or fusion of gametes. While in sexual reproduction, the gametes are formed. The male gamete and female gamete, they, re, uh, they fertilize, they fuse together during the process of fertilization. So, what are gametes? Let me tell you. Gametes are special cells, special reproductive cells which take part in the process of reproduction. They contain half the number of chromosomes as compared to other cells of the body. So, half chromosomes from male parent, half chromosomes from female parent. When they fuse together, the new cell has equal number of chromosomes. So, these specialized reproductive cell gametes are not formed in asexual, but they are formed in sexual reproduction. The fertilization, the process of fertilization means fusion of gamete cells to form new individual. So, this fertilization does not take place in asexual reproduction, but fertilization or fusion of gametes takes place in sexual reproduction. Next is multiplication. Since it is a very simple process, so it is fast, I mean simple and rapid process of reproduction. This is asexual. On the other hand, Sexual reproduction is very complex and a slow process since it involves fusion of gametes then growing up of new individuals. So, it is more complex and a slower process as compared to asexual reproduction. The new individuals, they are identical, they are mostly identical to the parent cell while in sexual reproduction, they are not identical. Although they belong to same species, they are similar, they have similar features, but they are not exact copies. This is so because variations are very less in asexual reproduction, but abundant variation takes place in sexual reproduction. This is because half chromosomes from male and half chromosomes from female are fusing together to form a new individual. So, it is a new combination of genetic material. Let us discuss in, in a very simplified form, I will tell you. Let us consider it as a parent cell, Let, uh, for example, an amoeba or any other unicellular organism. So, it has the chromosomes which contains the DNA which is the information center. The DNA is all the information regarding the characteristics of the individual, how the individual will behave, how will it multiply, grow, it, the all information is stored in the chromosomes. So, first step is this DNA replicates, it forms its own replica, this is the first step in asexual reproduction. Then these two strands, they separate out and form two daughter cells, right. So, these two daughter cells are identical to the parent cells. So, first the DNA multi, uh, replicates and then it is divided into two daughter cells. So, the daughter cells have same number of chromosome as the parent cell and they are mostly identical to the parent cell. This uh, kind of reproduction is very common in unicellular organisms like amoeba, in lower plants, 
like in vegetative reproduction and also in lower animals like hydra and sponges. On the other hand, in asexual reproduction, the male uh, parent which contains a, a chromosomes and the female. What happens for, uh, let us consider it has two uh, chromosomes. Let us consider a species in which the male also has two chromosomes and female also has two, uh, two chromosomes. What happens when the gametes are formed, only half the number of chromosomes are present. Here you can see there are two pairs and in males and two pairs in females. When the gamete cells are formed, they contain only half the number of chromosomes. Instead of two pairs, there are only two pairs. Such specialized cells are called gametes. The male, uh, this is the male gamete, this is the female gametes. During reproduction, these gametes fuse together to form a new cell, which will again have the two pairs. Two from the male gamete, two from the female gamete. The new cell so formed will again have two pairs of chromosomes, same like the parent cells. So, this kind of reproduction is called sexual reproduction. Now, since it is a new combination, the half chromosomes are coming from the male, half chromosomes are coming from female. So, it, since it is a new combination of genetic material, this new individual is not exact copy of the parents. It has abundant variations, right? So, this kind of reproduction is very common in multicellular and higher animals like humans, cats, dogs, whatever you see around, they are all, sec they are all undergo sexual reproduction. So, this is, these are the main differences between asexual and sexual reproduction. In the next section, we will take up detail about the asexual reproduction and its types. Now, let us study about asexual reproduction in detail. What is asexual reproduction? As I told you, it is a type of reproduction in which only one parent is involved. The new generation, the young ones of the new generation are produced only by the involvement of one parent. There are no formation or fertilization of gametes. So, it is uniparental without fertilization, without formation of gametes. And mostly the individual, the new cells which are formed, they are exact copies. They are identical to the parent cell. Apart from there are just few variations, but mostly they are identical to the parent cell. Now, asexual reproduction occurs in unicellular organisms, in some plants and in some lower animals like hydra and sponges. There are uh, basically six types of asexual reproduction. First is fission, second budding, then fragmentation, regeneration, vegetative propagation and spore formation. These six processes we will study in detail. The first one is fission. Now, what does fission mean? Fission, enduring fission, it is a type of asexual reproduction in which the parent body divides to form two or more individual cells, which are called the daughter cells. So, in fission, the process occurs in two steps. First, the nucleus divides the DNA replicates and the nucleus divides into two or more parts. Then the other cellular apparatus like cytoplasm and the organelles, they gather around the nucleus to form two separate individuals. That is fission. Fission again is of two types, the binary fission and multiple fission. Binary fission means splitting into two. Bi means two. So, binary fission is splitting into two. In this case, the parent cell first divides uh, divides into to make two daughter cells. The first step is the rep after the replication of DNA, the nucleus elongates. Then the cytoplasm and the cellular material also starts accumulating around the nucleus to form two daughter cells. As you can see, after this sex asexual reproduction, what happens? The parent body disappears. It ceases to exist because its own body is divided into two daughter cells. The you cannot see the parent cell anymore because its own body is divided into two parts. This is binary fission. It occurs in uh, organisms like amoeba, paramecium and euglena. The amoeba does not have a fixed shape, so the division can occur in any plane. 
In paramecium, the cell division occurs in transverse plane. While in euglena, it has a flip like flagella. So, the division occurs in vertical plane only, binary fission. The next one is multiple fission. In multiple fission, the parent cell divides to produce two or more than two individuals, many individual uh, cells at a time. So that is called multiple fission. So, what happens? First, the parent, the nucleus divides repeatedly inside the cell many times. Then the cellular matter also gathers around each nuclei to form many daughter cells. Now, when the conditions are favorable, this parent cell will burst open and will release all the daughter cells. So, at a time, more than two daughter cells are formed during this multiple fission. Let us understand the difference between binary fission and multiple fission. Firstly, it gives rise to only two daughter cells at a time, but in multiple fission, more than two daughter cells are formed. In this, nucleus divides only once during one uh, cellular division, but in this, nucleus divides repeatedly during one cycle of reproduction. Then, then this uh, the binary fission can occur only under favorable conditions. While multiple fission can under, occur under both favorable as well as unfavorable conditions. When the conditions are unfavorable, what will happen? The, uh, the nuclei will repeatedly divide, the daughter cells will be formed, but they will remain enclosed inside the, the cyst. The parent cell forms a cyst, which is a hard covering. They remain enclosed. Only when the conditions are favorable, the parent cell bursts open and releases the daughter cells. Right? So, it can occur both in favorable and unfavorable conditions. Next, in binary fission, the parent body, no part of the parent body remains. Its own body is completely divided into daughter cells. While in multiple fission, as you can see, the body covering of the parent cell, some residual cytoplasm, so some part of the parent body remains as a residue, as a dead part. This is the difference between binary fission and multiple fission. So, the first type of asexual reproduction is fission. In fission, the parent body divides to form two or more daughter cells. In binary fission, the parent body divides to form two daughter cells and the parent body ceases to exist. The parent body is no more present. No part is left. It forms two daughter cells. Example, in amoeba, paramecium and euglena. On the other hand, as we discussed in multiple fission, at a time a number of daughter cells are released, the nucleus divides repeatedly and a number of daughter cells are released when the conditions are favorable. It occurs in protozoans. So, that is all about fission. Now, we will move on to the other types of asexual reproduction. So, students, we just discussed about the first type of asexual reproduction that is by fission. Alright, so now next move on to the next type of asexual reproduction that is budding. Now, during budding, what happens? The parent organism grows an outgrowth, a, which is called a bud. The bud then separates out from the parent cell and grows into a new organism. So, in this, a bud is first formed. So, this budding process can occur in both unicellular organism and some multicellular simple organism. Let us study about two examples. First example is yeast. Yeast, as you know, is a single cellular fungi. It is widely used in brewing industry and in baking. So, when a mature uh, yeast cell is ready to reproduce, it grows an outgrowth. This outgrowth is called bud. Now, then the nucleus also divides and one of the nucleus enters into the bud. This bud, when it is mature enough, it detaches itself from the parent body and grows into a new organism. In some cases, many buds are formed and they remain attached to the parent body for some time. And when the conditions are favorable, these buds then separate out and each bud grows into a new organism. So, as you can see, a yeast cell, first there is an outgrowth, then the nucleus divides Nucleus enters into this bud and then this is multiple budding 
and these buds then separate out and grows into new individual. This way a yeast cell has produced more of its own kind. Now I will give you another example of budding that is in a very simple multicellular animal called hydra. The hydra has tentacles. Now when a hydra organism is ready to reproduce, there is multiple division, cell division at a particular site. At that site, a outgrowth develops. This outgrowth is called a bud. Now, this bud also develops tentacles just like the parent cell. Now, when this bud is mature enough, it separates out and grows into a new organism. So, this is budding in hydra. Right? So, as you can see, the parent body remains intact and this bud has separated out. This bud will grow into a new organism, a new hydra. So, this is another mode of asexual reproduction by budding. Now, let us try to differentiate between fission, which we just studied in the last slide, and this budding. In fission, as you saw, it occurs only in unicellular organism. While in case of budding, it can occur both in unicellular as well as in some simple multicellular organism. The second difference is in budding, as you can see, first there is an outgrowth, a bud develops, later on the nucleus divides and one of the nucleus enters into the bud. But in fission, as we saw in the last slide, what happens? First, the nucleus divides, that is the first step, the nucleus divides, then the cytoplasm also divides. So, it is the other way around in budding. Alright. The third main difference is in fission, the parent body is divided into two daughter cells. The whole uh, itself, the body is divided. So, the parent body does not exist after the reproduction. But in this case, the parent body remains intact. Only the bud separates out. In this case also, the parent body is intact. Only the bud separates out and grows into a new organism. But in the fission, what we saw, the parent body is lost, loses its identity because its own body gets divided into the daughter cells. So, these are the three main differences in uh, between budding and fission. In fission, only in unicellular, while budding in both unicellular and multicellular. In fission, first the nucleus divides, then the cytoplasm divides, while in budding, first there is an outgrowth, then the nucleus divide. Third difference, in fission, the parent cell loses its identity after reproduction, while in budding, the identity of the parent cell is intact, only the outgrowth separates, right? So, now, let's move on to next type of asexual reproduction. So, students, we just studied about two types of asexual reproduction. First was fission and second was budding. Now, let us move on to the third type of asexual reproduction that is fragmentation. Now, during fragmentation, what happens? As the name suggests, the body of the, of the parent is divided, is broken down into pieces and each piece is called a fragment. Then this each fragment grows into a new individual. This way, more of its own kinds are produced. This type of reproduction, that is fragmentation, is very common in green filamentous algae called spirogyra. In spirogyra, what happens? They are, they, it is a unicellular organism, but each cell is similar. Each cell is capable of photosynthesis, cell division and growth. So, when this body is re ready for reproduction, it broke, breaks down into some pieces, right? Each piece is called a fragment then each fragment can do cell division and it can grow into a new individual. This way, the parent body divides into fragment and each, p each fragment grows into new individual. This mode of reproduction is called fragmentation. Next, the fourth type of asexual reproduction is regeneration. Now, there are some organisms we can regenerate, they can replace their lost body parts. This can be a mode of reproduction in some simple organisms like hydra and planaria. There is some level of tissue differentiation in these organisms. So, by accident or by self-amputation, when the body is broken down into pieces, then each piece grows into a new organism. 
but somehow it is different from fragmentation. First, in this, the, all the body parts are not similar. As you can see, there is some level of tissue differentiation. So, when the body is divided into pieces, what happens? The, there are some specialized cells, okay, they are called regenerative cells. They first proliferate at their site, they repeatedly divide, multiply and then tissue differentiation occurs and the whole organism is made again. So, from the pieces, new organisms are born these from these body parts right so what happens first the body uh, gets broken into pieces i have drawn the original uh, original body parts in blue color so you can see this blue color is the original body part of the parent this red is the regenerative part similarly in this part and this part so from one parent organism planaria three new planaria are born they are reduced right so, now first let us understand what is the difference between fragmentation and regeneration. Both occur in multicellular organism. But in fragmentation, as you can see, all the cells are similar. They all, each cell is capable of photosynthesis, of cell division and growth. But in regeneration, the body parts are not similar. They are different. There is some level of tissue differentiation. Second difference is that first the body divides and then the each cell div uh, multiplies. There is no role of specialized regenerative cells. All cells are similar. But in regeneration, what happens when the body is broken down? There are some specialized cells which take part in growing into and tissue differentiation. So, two main differences. First, first the body divides. All the cells are similar. All cells are not similar. In this case, there is no role of specialized cells. In this case, there are certain specialized regenerative cells which take part in cell division and tissue differentiation. One more thing. We can, uh, you can be asked to differentiate between fragmentation and fission. If you remember what happens in fission, the parent body is divided into two or more daughter cells. So, what is the difference? First, in fission, fission occurs only in unicellular organisms like amoeba. But uh, fragmentation occurs in multicellular organisms like algae, spirogyra. Second difference is in fission, first the nucleus divides and then the cytoplasm also divides. But in fragmentation, first the body is broken down into pieces. The division, the cell multiplication occurs later on. Now, in Another question arises, why this type of reproduction, the regeneration or fragmentation is not possible in higher organisms, higher multicellular organisms in which the mechanism is quite complex. Now, the first reason is, since these organisms are very complex, the cells are divided into, differentiated into tissues, tissues are differentiated into different organs. So, if one body part cannot grow all those organs, it is very complex. Second uh, reason is, in multicellular complex organisms, the growth and uh, development is controlled by nerves and hormones, right, as you studied in the last chapter, control and coordination. So, each body part does not have all the nervous stimulus and all the hormones which are capable for growth and development. That is why regeneration is possible only in simple organisms like hydra and planaria. Now, let us move on to the next section. So, next, the fifth type of asexual reproduction is spore formation or sporulation. The spores, they are very tiny, unicellular, asexual reproductive bodies which can give rise to a new plant, new organism when the conditions are favorable. So, this is very common in this uh, rhizopus or the bread mold. You must have noticed, if you leave a moist bread in open, after some time it is covered with the fungus. That fungus is called rhizopus or bread mold. Now, these rhizopus, they have thread-like structure called hyphae. Some of the aerial hyphae have blob-like structures called sporangia. These sporangium, they bear very tiny dark spores. So, when the sporangium becomes mature, they burst open and the spores are released into the air.
these pores are very tiny they are carried by the air into long distances so this is the mode of reproduction in fungus some of this algae and some bacteria also so when an organism reproduces by producing spores how are they advantages what are the advantage to the organism the first point is that the spores they are covered by a very thick layer outside thick wall so they form a cyst so this enables the spores to pass through unfavorable conditions like drought very high temperature or very low, low temperature the spores remain intact inside this thick wall so when the conditions are favorable when they fall onto some substratum they start germinating and grow into a new plant when they get warmth when they get food water everything is uh, favorable they start growing into a new organism so you can see the spores are present everywhere almost everywhere you leave a moist bed the spores will fall into it and start growing into a new plant this is a first type first advantage to the organism the second advantage is dispersal the spores are so tiny they are easily carried by the air to long distances so their dispersal is very easy so we just covered spore formation or sporulation as a method of asexual reproduction right the next type of reproduction is vegetative propagation vegetative propagation is giving rise to new plant from the vegetative parts of the plant like leaves roots or stem the reproductive part is the flower rest all other parts are called vegetative parts of the plant the vegetative propagation can be natural or artificial artificially it is done by cutting layering grafting and many such methods so if a plant propagates give birth to new plant from vegetative parts it is called a natural mode of vegetative propagation the first example is by roots now some roots like dahlia and sugarcane the roots have notches or buds so when these buds come in contact with the soil they can give rise to a new plant another example is the underground stem or the potato tuber now as you must have seen there are certain notches in the potato if you see from a magnifying glass there are buds present on these notches so if you sow this part of the stem bearing a notch or a bud into the soil a new plant will can grow out of this bud this is another type of vegetative propagation from stem right another example is bryophyllum the marginal notches of the bryophyllum has buds as you can see here so when this leaf come in contact with the soil each bud can grow into a new plant so when a plant grows from vegetative parts of the plant it is called vegetative propagation the vegetative propagation has many advantages to the farmers to those who are growing crops firstly for the seedless plants it is the only known method for reproduction in seedless plants like banana pineapple sugarcane so it is the only mode of reproduction in seedless plant second is quicker method this mode of reproduction uh, vegetative propagation is quicker as compared to those grown from seeds i'll give you an example if the uh, potato crop is grown using potato tubers it takes 3 months for a fully raised crop but if potato crops are grown using seeds it take 15 months five times more time so this mode of reproduction is much quicker the plant bears seeds and the fruits much earlier as compared to the crops grown from seeds the third advantage is uniform variety the seeds and the fruits obtained from vegetative propagation they are uniform in size in taste quality and aroma so you get a good yield you can maintain a good variety for a long time another example is the survival rate the survival rate of the crop grown by vegetative propagation is almost 100% but on the other side if the crop is grown using seeds the survival rate is only 1 to 10% so you can see these are the advantages of crops 
grown by vegetative propagation. So, with this we complete our asexual reproduction. We discussed all five parts that is fission, budding, regeneration, fragmentation, spirulation and vegetative propagation. So, students reproduction means producing more of their own kind. Now, reproduction is of two types sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. Asexual reprodu in asexual reproduction only one parent is involved. So, there are various modes of asexual reproduction. Now, this video will further help you in understanding the various types of asexual reproduction. So, let's begin. Methods of asexual reproduction. In this method, certain body cells undergo repeated mitotic division and give rise to two or more organisms of the same type. Different methods of asexual reproduction are firstly binary fission, second one is multiple fission, then budding, fragmentation, spore formation, regeneration, vegetative propagation, etc. The fission and budding are most common methods of asexual reproduction among the unicellular organisms like bacteria, amoeba and yeast. First, binary fission. Binary fission takes place in unicellular organisms like bacteria, amoeba, paramecium and leishmania. Now, in this process, first the nucleus divides into two equal halves. It first replicates and divides, followed by appearance of constriction in the central wall of the cell. Finally, the cytoplasm also divides and gives rise to two cells. Now, each of these daughter individuals then grow into full, uh, full size. Next one is multiple fission. Under favorable conditions, the parent organisms develops a thick protective wall or the cyst around it, which can actually protect it from unfavorable conditions. Within the cyst, the nucleus repeatedly divides, producing many nuclei. Later on, each nucleus gets surrounded by small amount of cytoplasm around it and many daughter cells are produced. Now, each daughter cell develops into full organisms. This is seen in malarial parasites. The cyst bursts when the conditions are favorable. The third type is budding. Budding is commonly observed in yeast and in hydra. In hydra, a bulb-like projection called the bud is produced from the body. The nucleus of the body divides into two. One of the nuclei passes into the bud and the bud detaches itself from the parent body. It grows into full size and becomes a new individual. Next one is fragmentation. In some filamentous organisms such as green algae that is pyrogyra, the filament breaks up into two or more fragments. Now, each fragment or the piece, it grows into new individual. Next is spore formation. You must have observed the non-flowering plant called mucor, bacteria, ferns or mosses. They form spores. Spore formation is the common method of reproduction in fungi. In fungus, during spore formation, a structure called sporangium develops from the hyphae. The nucleus in the sporangium divides repeatedly. Each nucleus gets surrounded by a small portion of cytoplasm and the spores are formed. These sporangium, they burst and the spores are released. These spores will give rise to new organism under favorable condition. Next is regeneration. The ability of living organisms to repair themselves or restore their lost parts is called regeneration. For example, it happens in starfish. It has five arms. If one arm is cut off along the part of the center due to some accident, a new whole animal will grow from that arm. Next is vegetative propagation. This is an asexual method of reproduction in plant where vegetative parts like root, stem or leaf, they give rise to new individuals. Example is bryophyllum which can give rise to new plant through its leaves. 
no reproductive organs part in this method are involved like that is flowers are not involved seeds are not produced so in potato the new plant can arise from the scars which are called eye of the potato now let us move to another type of reproduction that is sexual reproduction another important topic under this is the tissue culture tissue culture is a procedure in which many new plants can be grown from a growing healthy plant in a disease free environment in the laboratory so what is done is the procedure the tissue is taken from the growing tips of a gro uh, growing healthy plant this tissue is then placed in an artificial medium and provided all the nutrients in this medium the, these cells they grow they multiply and form a group of cells which is called callus this callus is then taken out and put in a separate medium which contains hormones these hormones help in growth and development as well as differentiation of the tissues so different during differentiation different parts of the plants are formed like root stem and leaves when the small plantlets are formed then they are these plantlets are placed in the soil and they grow into healthy plants so by this process we get we can get large number of plants from a healthy growing plant in a disease free environment